Okay, we're going to test an impedance relay. So the first thing I got to do is I got to go to the test list. I'm going to select impedance relay. And I'm going to go to the library. And I'm going to select the relay. And now we're ready to enter the settings for the relay. So we've selected the Schweitzer 411L relay. We have uh, some default settings already entered to save some time. Uh, so for this particular relay, uh, we've got three zones of protection. Zone 1, and you can see the setting values here of the relay. Z1P is 6.24 ohms and Z1 angle is 84 degrees for zone 1. For zone 2, it's 9.36 ohms at 84 degrees. And for zone 3 in the reverse direction, it's 1.87 ohms at 84 degrees. You notice we can also establish a quad. Let me go back to zone 1 real quick. Uh, we can also put in quad settings, but we're going to deal primarily with Mo right now. Uh, down here under tolerance, we can see we can put in the default values, which is plus or minus 5%, plus or minus 0 0.01 ohms per loop. And for the timing, it's plus or minus 5%, plus 0.1 seconds, or it's, so you can have plus or or. So in this case, absolute value. Uh, we can show uh, phase to ground, phase to phase, and three phase fault settings. Let's select a phase to phase to start with. We can put in the CT and PT ratios, and we can show everything in primary values, or we can show everything in secondary values. We're going to work with secondary values. If we want to just copy all the settings to all the different zones, we can just copy the tolerances right there and copy the settings right there. So now I'm ready to go uh, create a test. So before I can do that, I'm going to hit the green check bucket. And that's going to take us over here to the configuration screen for setting up the pre-fault voltage and currents. So I can come in here and I can enter in a pre-fault voltage of, say, 69 volts and a, a pre-fault current, say, of uh, 0.5 amps and uh, a load angle of 15 degrees or so. And we set a default uh, duration time for the pre-fault at two seconds. Uh, that ensures that the relay will be properly polarized before we hit it with the first fault test. Some people have used shorter uh, times and that's okay, but there's a point in time where the relay uh, will not be able to see the pre-fault. So make sure that your pre-fault time is long enough before you start applying t uh, the fault. In this particular case, we're going to use constant current of 5 amps. Uh, some relay manufacturers require constant voltage. Some uh, relays also require constant source or constant source RX. So depending on the relay manufacturer, uh, depends on what numbers you put in here. And by the way, for a very short reach relay, uh, your constant current value will be, have to be much greater than 5 amps. Otherwise, for your face-to-face -face fault voltage, the fault voltage will be too small. We can do a shot test, we can do a pulse ramp, or we can do a pulse ramp binary search. Well, we already know the class, the characteristic of the relay, so I really don't need to do the binary search. We're going to use pulse ramp. So we'll be applying a pre-fault condition and then, and then incrementing up, looking for the relay to operate until it operates. Again, we're going to plot everything in secondary values. And then here are the time settings for the phase to ground, the phase to phase, and the three phase fault. So for zone one, we expect the relay to operate instantaneously. And the time that we're going to apply the fault to relay is 100 milliseconds. For zone two, it'd be 500 milliseconds. And for zone three, it'd be 900 milliseconds. Okay, so we have everything entered that we want. I'm going to hit the green check button. And that's going to take me over here to the test screen. Now we have several options available to customer. Uh, you can come in and you can use the, one of the quick test uh, features where you'll draw in three test lines. Or, personally, I like to draw in my own test line. So I'm going to click outside the characteristic and click inside the characteristic, and that will be my test line. Now I can add as many test lines as you like, but the more you add, the more time it takes to do the test. And primarily for this relay, in my opinion, two or three test lines is plenty. But for this example, we're just going to put in one test line. And you can see it goes through zone 1 and zone 2. And I could press the play all button and it would do both zones uh, for the face-to-face -face fault. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to play the one fault. And all you have to do is push the blue play button. Pushing the blue play button, over on the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see the pre-fault condition and now you see the fault condition. And you can see the Z value changing and you can see the voltage is collapsing. And then when the relay is going to operate, it should be within the, the characteristic of the relay 
And when the relay operates, it'll show up as a green dot. Okay. Now it's doing zone two. Okay. Now you see it's it's ramping in much slower because it's a zone two operation that we're looking for. And then when it gets close to the relay characteristic, bam. So there we have our two test results for zone one and zone two at that particular test line. If I want to at this point, I can go take a look at my test results. I click on the binoculars here, and it's going to save my report, and it's going to generate this, uh, this screen right here. And what you can see up here at the top, the user comes in, puts in the information about the relay, the substation, the serial number of the relay, CT, PT ratios, etc. And then down here we see the test that we just got through completing. As we see the zone 1 and the zone 2 test results over here, we see the actual uh, test voltages and currents, uh, the impedance value theoretical, and whether or not it passed or failed to test. In this case, obviously, it passed. If we wanted to go back and uh, if we want to edit anything, we can go in, we can add comments, edit the test, close the report. Let's go ahead and close the report now. At this point, I can now save the results and then go back later and pull that report back up and generate the test report. To learn more, simply go to the MEGAR website and download the information for the MEGAR software.